Hi there, I am Sujata, founder of Grace USMLE Tutoring. I partnered with Achievable to create a comprehensive USMLE Step 1 course for medical students. It combines my years of USMLE tutoring experience with Achievable's powerful software. To learn more and gain access to a free trial, visit achievable.me. Hello everyone, I am Sujata, founder of Grace USMLE and USMLE author at Achievable. Today, I'll be talking about changes in the cardiac cycle tracings seen in valvular heart diseases. The diagram shows a normal cardiac cycle. If you look from top to bottom, you can see the EKG, followed by the aortic pressure tracing, followed by the left atrial pressure tracing, the left ventricular pressure tracing, the left volume pressure tracing, and then the heart sounds. The pressure and volume changes are plotted on the x-axis. When we are trying to differentiate the different valvular heart diseases while looking at the cardiac cycle tracings, you need to note specially three pressure curves. Those are the aortic pressure curve, the left atrial pressure curve, and the left ventricular pressure curve. The three pressure curves have been highlighted in green in the diagram. In a normal cardiac cycle, the peak of the aortic pressure tracing coincides with the peak of the left ventricular pressure tracing. At the same time, the left atrial pressure tracing will stay close to the baseline of the left ventricular pressure tracing. Let's look at changes in the cardiac cycle tracings in valvular heart diseases. In aortic stenosis, the aortic valve is stenosed so that the left ventricle has to push harder to eject blood into the aorta. This leads to a lower than normal rise in the aortic pressure. At the same time, there is increase in the left ventricle pressure, causing an increase in the afterload. If we correlate these to the findings on the cardiac cycle tracings for aortic stenosis, you can see that the peaks for the left ventricle pressure and the aortic pressure no longer coincide. There is a big difference between the peak of the left ventricle pressure, which is much higher now compared to the peak of the aortic pressure. In aortic insufficiency, also called as aortic regurge, blood flows back from the aorta into the left ventricle during systole. This leads to a widened pulse pressure and hyperdynamic circulation, which can be seen clinically as head bobbing with systole, pistol shots over the femoral artery, and bounding pulses. In aortic regurg, there is a big difference between the peak and the trough of the aortic pressure tracing, more than 70 millimeter mercury in the examples shown here. In mitral wall disorders, look for changes in the left atrial pressure tracing. Mitral stenosis is seen in many cases of rheumatic heart disease. In mitral stenosis, there is narrowing of the opening at the mitral valve so that the left atrium has to push harder to eject blood into the left ventricle. This leads to an increase in pressure in the left atrium and left atrial hypertrophy. In a normal cardiac cycle, the left atrial pressure tracing is very close to the baseline of the left ventricular pressure tracing. But in mitral stenosis, the left atrial pressures are continuously elevated in all phases of the cardiac cycle. In mitral insufficiency or mitral regurg, blood flows back into the left atrium during left ventricular systole. If you look at the left atrial pressure tracing, you can see that the pressure is staying near the baseline during diastole, but the left atrial pressure increases from mid to late systole. Let's summarize the important points. In aortic stenosis, Look for highly elevated pressure tracing of the left ventricle, which is much higher and no longer in tandem with the aortic pressure tracing. 
in aortic rigor or insufficiency there is a wide pulse pressure with a big difference between the peak and the trough of the aortic pressure tracing in mitral stenosis there is sustained elevation in the left atrial pressure throughout systole and diastole in mitral regurgitation the left atrial pressure is elevated only during mid to late systole hope this video helps you diagnose valvular heart disorders from the cardiac tracings thanks for watching